السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وتحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ونظم أمركم وصلاح ذات البين فإنها خير من عامة الصلاة والصيام قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين ونمكن لهم في الأرض ونري فرعون وهامان وجنودهما منهم ما كانوا يحذرون Respected brothers and sisters The eve of the 15th of Sha'ban which is a night like tomorrow night, Saturday night, is the birth anniversary of the Savior of humanity and the Imam of our time, Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadhar, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, the man who is promised by not only Islam, but all world religions, Judaism, Christianity and the religion of Islam have a promise that at the end of time eventually justice and peace will be established on earth after the earth has been filled with oppression and tyranny and injustice. And this is a promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in several verses in the Quran. In one verse Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ we have written in the Zabur, in the Psalms of David, and the Dhikr, and the Torah, and the Quran as well. What is that promise? That the earth will be inherited by the righteous. The earth will be inherited by the believers. In another verse, Allah says, وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And we shall bestow a favor upon those who were oppressed in the land, وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And we shall make them the Imams, and we shall make them the inheritors. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, نَحْنُ الْمُسْتَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ We are the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt whose right and haqq was taken away from us. When the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, none of them, none of them were given the free opportunity to be able to spread the message of Islam. Start with Amir al muminin Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and then go down all the way to Imam al Hassan al Askari. None of the Imams. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa promised 12 Imams, 12 Imams from Quraysh, 12 Imams from this Ummah, but none of them were given the freedom. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, Hu alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda. وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He is the one who sent His Prophet with the true message and this message of Islam, this message of the truth, it will overcome all other messages. Meaning that the Qur'an has promised us that the message of Rasulullah, the message of peace, the message of love, the message of Islam, there will come a time where it will be the overpowering message across the globe. Has that ever happened? Since the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa since the time of Adam, then came Nuh, then came Ibrahim, then came Musa, then came Jesus, then came Rasulullah, 
Has it ever happened where truth and peace and justice has prevailed across the globe? It's never happened. This is why this is a promise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will definitely happen. And this is a promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all religions, major world religions, will share in this happiness because the Christians will be happy and the Jews, those who are following the true message of their prophets and the Muslims will be happy. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says in a hadith that is narrated in Bukhari. Bukhari, he, he mentions this hadith. He says, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا ظَهَرَ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How will you be when the son of Mary descends in Jerusalem, Jesus descends in Jerusalem, and the imam that will be leading the prayer, the one who will be leading the prayer on that day in front of Jesus will be from you. Meaning Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And we believe, my dear brothers and sisters, what is the goal? What is the mission of Imam Al-Mahdi? We see in the works of Hadith, in the verses of Rasulullah, in the, in the sayings of Rasulullah, in the Quran, and in Dua, a Dua which we will be reciting during the month of Ramadan, Dua Al-Iftitah, which is a Dua that is narrated to us from one of the deputies of the Imam. The Imam had four deputies during his ghaiba. One of them, he mentions this dua, dua al-iftitah. And in that dua we say, Allahumma azhir bihi deenak. Meaning, let the religion prevail. Right now, is the true religion of God prevailing? Unfortunately, no. You see, the Jews, they misrepresent the true message of Moses. And the Christians, they re misrepresent the message of Jesus. And the Muslims, unfortunately, the majority of them misrepresent the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Today, where is the justice? Where is the true faith? Unfortunately, many have taken the religion of Islam just by appearances, just by looks. Whereas the essence of the religion is missing from our communities and across the Muslim globe. This is why we say, Allahumma azhir bihi deenak. Let the religion, the true message of Islam, let that come be, let that come to be and become apparent. And the true sunnah of Rasulullah. Today, the sunnah of Rasulullah has died. Today, the true sunnah of Rasulullah is not being implemented. And this happened immediately after the death of the Prophet. As soon as the Prophet died, the family of the Prophet and the sunnah of Rasulullah was marginalized, and other people came and they brought forth their own sunnah. They brought forth their own traditions. وَسُنَّةَ نَبِيِّكْ حَتَّى لَا يَسْتَغْفَى بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْحَقِّ مَخَافَةَ أَحَدٍ مِّنَ الْخَلْقِ So that, let the haq not be afraid of people. Today, a lot of times, we are afraid to come and identify with Islam. We are afraid of what this, this person is going to say, what this government is going to do, how am I going to get persecuted? and I don't have the freedom to practice my faith, we say, oh Allah, let the Imam come so the true religion will prevail and the sunnah of Rasulullah will dominate so that no one will be afraid of practicing the religion, so that justice will not be compromised. Unfortunately, since the time of the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, justice has been compromised, especially by those who are in power, especially by those who are in rule. Today when you see the Muslims, when you see the innocent lives in Gaza, they're being bombed and they're being attacked. It's been over 130 some days and you have over 1.5, 1.6 billion Muslims and we can't do anything. What does this mean? This means that justice has been compromised. This means that the Muslim leadership has failed us and they're not truly implementing the message of Islam. We pray for that day, my dear brothers and sisters. We pray for the day where the Imam السلام, will rise and establish that, that justice. And the Imam السلام, he is the inheritor of the prophets and the messengers. He is the inheritor of Adam and Nuh and Musa and Isa and all of the prophets and messengers. He will be fulfilling the task and the job and the duty of the prophets and the messengers. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being that Imam al-Mahdi is a continuation of all of the prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed within him certain signs and certain marks that are accepted by all of the prophets, that are accepted by all of the messengers. For example, and these are some of the signs that some people they question. How could we, for example, believe in an imam who is hidden from the eyes? How can someone be an imam when he was a young child? How can someone have a long life? All of these questions that we ask, but we see that these questions are answered in the lives of the prophets in the Qur'an. If we truly believe in Musa, if we truly believe in Nuh, if we truly believe in Isa, if we truly believe in all of the prophets and believe in the Qur'an, then it would not be difficult for us to believe in Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadr. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَدَارَ فِي الْقَائِمْ مِنَّا ثَلَاثَةَ أَدَارَهَا فِي ثَلَاثَةٍ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed three signs that he placed in three of the messengers of God. These three signs are in the Qa'im of Al-Muhammad, meaning in Imam Al-Hujjah. And he says, Qaddara mawlidahu taqdeer mawlid Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the birth of Imam Al-Mahdi similar to the birth of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. How is it so? Because Prophet Musa السلام, was born in a time where Pharaoh had received a prophecy and he knew that there will be a child from the Israelites, a newborn child that is born on this particular year. This child is going to be the reason of the fall of Pharaoh and his government. So what did Pharaoh begin to do? He began to kill every newborn child. He would send these... Um, the, these um, ladies, they would go and they would check who from the, children, from the Israelites, who is pregnant. And as soon as they find out, as soon as she gives birth, right away they would kill that child. Allah says this in the Quran. So he was very careful to kill all of the child. And they say he killed thousands, perhaps over 20, 30,000 children. They were all killed. Because he was afraid that one of those children is going to be the reason of his downfall. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan and people have a plan. And which plan is the plan that prevails? Yamkuruna wa yamkur Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin. Allah says people plan and I plan as well. People, we forget that God has a plan as well. And God is the best of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hid the birth of Prophet Musa salam. His mother, she was pregnant. They couldn't tell. There were no signs of pregnancy. She ends up giving birth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the mother with that very emotional, very heart full of love and attachment. When a lady gives birth, she's, the, the dearest thing to her is her baby that she has just given to. She gives birth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her, Go, oh, ila ummi Musa. And we revealed to the mother of Musa that feed him and then place him in the river. Place him in the river. She comes and she places, she makes a wooden box and she places a newborn child and she places him in the river. And where did that child end up going? He ends up going to the house of Pharaoh. To the house of Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't have a child. And he ended up raising him. And Musa was raised right under the nose of Fir'aun. And this is exactly what happened to Imam al-Mahdi, my dear brothers and sisters. The mother of Imam al-Mahdi, Imam Sadiq says this, and this is what we believe. The mother of Imam al-Mahdi, Narjis, as Sayyida Narjis, there were no signs of pregnancy. No signs of pregnancy. Even Hakima, who is the aunt of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, the aunt of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari, the sister of Imam al-Hadi, the eve of the 15th of Sha'ban, Imam, al- Imam al-Askari, he tells her, Oh my dear aunt, tonight I want you to stay with us. Stay, stay, sleep the night here. She tells her, what is it? It's the night of the 15th of Sha'ban. It's a night of a'mal, of course. She tells her, what's going on? He tells her, tonight, Waliyullah al-A'zam is going to be born. The great savior is going to be born on a night like this. She tells him, who's pregnant? 
She tells him, I don't see any signs of a lady in the house that is about to give birth. He tells her, Narjus. She says, I looked at Narjus. I didn't see any signs of pregnancy in Narjus. But she says, he's an imam. Imam al Askar is an imam. I believed him. But then she says, as it came close to Fajr, I look at her again and I don't see any signs of pregnancy, any signs of labor. Imam al Askari, she says he was praying. He tells her, Oh my dear aunt, do not doubt the promise of Allah. This is a promise by Allah that Allah has promised. And she says, At Fajr, on the 15th of Sha'ban, Narjus gave birth to Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar. Ajalallahu ta'ala. Second, as soon as the Imam السلام, was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the Imam to be in a state of ghayba, meaning in a state hidden from the eyes. Now when we say the Imam is hidden, does this mean that the Imam can't see us and the Imam is in a different planet somewhere else? No, we cannot see the Imam. Do we have to see the leader? We don't have to see the leader. Right now, do we see God? We can't see God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you do your job. The important thing is that you do your role. You fulfill your role in the community and society. Do your task. God sees your actions. The Prophet sees your actions and the Mu'minun. And the Mu'minun in this verse are the Imams of the Ahl Bayt and the Imam of our time. And this is why Imam Sadiq he says, he says, "Qaddara Mawlidahu Taqdir Mawlid Musa." He made his birth like the birth of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. "Wa qaddara ghaybatahu Taqdir Ghaybat Isa alayhi salam." And he made his occultation be similar to the occultation of Jesus. Right now, we Muslims we believe that Jesus is alive, but Jesus, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, raised him so that no one is able to see Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the same with Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar and this is to protect his life. This is to protect his life. As we mentioned, all of the Imams were persecuted. All of the Imams were killed. All of the Imams were either killed by the sword like Amir al-Mu'mineen, like Imam al Hussein, or poisoned or imprisoned. So after 11 Imams, they've, they have all been persecuted. They have all been killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that final one, the twelfth promise, to protect his life. One, why is the Imam in an occultation? To protect his life. Second, to test us. And third, so that we change our lives maybe. Because we, take, we took Ummah the, for over a hundred and up, up, up to two hundred years, people would take advantage of the Imams. They did not benefit from them. They did not show them the respect that they deserved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the Imam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolonged his life. And this is why the Imam alayhi salam, he says, وَقَدَّرَ إِبْطَاءُهُ تَقْدِيرْ إِبْطَاءُ نُوحٍ alayhi salam. And he made his long life like the life of Prophet Nuh, Noah. Prophet Nuh lived with his people for 950 years. If you believe in the Qur'an, you believe in that. If you believe in the Qur'an, then this is not going to be something difficult for you to believe in. So why is it difficult for us to accept it when it comes to Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the birth of the Imam of our time and the birth of the Imam took place on the eve of the 15th of Sha'ban, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from his sincere followers, from those who are going to be his supporters and those who establish for his cause. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of the Imam of our time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allah Muhammad Bismillahirrahmanirrahim ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه 
من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له من بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها أحدا فردا صمدا حيا قيوما لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وتحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والشهداء والصديقين وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن أبي طالب وصل اللهم على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء وصل اللهم على صبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة الخلف الهادي المهدي أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم صل على محمد وعلي in a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he says, من أفضل أعمال أمتي انتظار الفرج From the best deeds of my ummah, one of the best things that a person could do is to actively wait for the faraj of the imam, waiting for the imam alayhi salam. Now when we talk about waiting for the imam, how should we wait? Today some of us were saying, I'm waiting right now. Because the Imam didn't come, I'm just waiting for the Imam. But that is not the active way to wait. This is the passive way of waiting. We need to actively wait for the Imam and prepare ourselves for the Imam. And there are several ways that we can do that. One is that we need to constantly be connected with the Imam of our time. Today many of us do not even know the Imam. Many of us do not even remember the Imam of our time. He has been forgotten from our daily lives. How many of us say salam to the... He's our living Imam. We treat him, a lot of us, we love the Imam. We treat him like Imam al-Hussein. We treat him like Imam al-Hassan, like Imam Zayn al-Abdin. Imam, the Imams that have passed on. Well, there's a big difference between Imam al-Hujjah and the other Imams. And the difference is that he's alive. He's our current Imam right now. So what does that mean? That means that we need to keep him on our minds. That means we need to say salam to the imam every day. That means we need to remember him. And this is why in one of the ziyaras, ziyarat al Yasin, which is a ziyara that is recommended to perform when you want to say salam to them. Just like we visit all the imams, we have to also say salam to the imam of our time. You say, As-salamu alayka hina taqoom. As-salamu alayka hina taq'ud As-salamu alayka hina taq'ra'u wa tubayyin Meaning peace be upon you in all your circumstances Peace be upon you wherever you may be And there's a dua that we recite That is recommended to recite on Fridays And on the days of Eid And this is dua in Nudba A very beautiful dua Which is a dua that teaches us to connect with the Imam in that dua we say Layt shi'ri ayna astaqarrat bika nawa Bal ayyu ardhin taqulluka aw thara Abi radwa aw ghayriha amdhi tuwa Where are you? Do I ever think of where the imam is? How is he living right now? How is his circumstances? Do I ever connect with him? He sees all of this oppression that's going on My dear brothers and sisters We see the oppression that's going on And we, it breaks our hearts Imagine what the Imam alayhi salam sees and what the Imam has been seeing throughout this long time. And we see that all of the Imams, they would teach us to be connected with Imam al-Hujjah. Even the Imams that came before him. One of the companions, he says, I walked in on Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam and I saw Imam al-Sadiq, he's sitting and he's crying and he's remembering Imam al-Mahdi. And he's saying, Sayyidi ghaybatuka nafat riqadi wa ghayyakat alayya mihadi wa asarrat minni rahatu fuadi. He says, Oh my master, 
Your ghaybah has taken away my rest. It's taken away my sleep. It's taken, it's, it's, it's made me uncomfortable. The fact that we are disconnected with the imam. My dear brothers and sisters, another thing that we must do is that we have to prepare for the arrival of the imam. If you have guests coming to your house, are you just going to sit and wait? No, you're going to get ready. You're going to make sure that you're planning, you're ready, so that when the guests come, you are ready for the guests. What have we done to show that we are ready for the imam? One of the things that we can do is that we have to establish and see what is the imam going to do. The imam is going to establish justice on earth. Am I from those agents of God that is working towards establishing justice? The imam salam will strive to spread the message of Islam, the message of Rasulullah. Am I from those who are working and striving towards spreading the message of Islam and the message of God? So this is something that we have to do. Third, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we must do dua for the imam. We have to pray for the imam. And this dua that we perform, Allahumma kun li waliyik al hujjat ibn al hasan, this is a dua for the imam. Oh Allah, protect the life of the imam and hasten the reappearance of the imam. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he tells his companions, Satusibukum shubha. There's going to come a time where you remain like sheep. That is lost without the shepherd. Satusibukum shubha fatapkawna bila alamin yara wala imami huda. You're going to remain as if you have no imam. Wala yanju minha illa man da'a bidu'a il gharik. The Imam alayhi salam he says, No one is going to be saved except the one who does the dua of the gharik. What's gharik? Gharik is the one who's drowning. Wala yanju minha illa man da'a bidu'a il gharik. Meaning, if you're drowning, what does that mean? That means you're desperate. That means you want to hold on to anything. When we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we ask Allah to hasten the reappearance of the Imam, are we really desperate? Or are we just doing dua because everyone else is doing dua? For many of us, we're just praying because everyone else is praying. We're okay with the Imam not being here right now. We're, our life is content because maybe the Imam comes and he's going to expect certain things from me. Am I willing to change my life? Am I willing to change my life right now? So then the imam, the, the man, he asked the imam, وَكَيْفَ دُعَاءِ الْغَرِيقِ What is دُعَاءِ الْغَرِيقِ? What is this dua? He says, you say, يَا اللَّهُ يَا رَحْمَانُ يَا رَحِيمُ يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكِ What does this mean? يَا الله, O oh God, يَا رَحْمَان, O oh mercy giving, merciful. يَا, يا الله, يَا رَحْمَان, يَا رَحِيمُ Ya muqallib al qulub O one who changes the heart. This is why the heart is called qalb, because it's constantly changing. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Keep my heart established and strong on your religion, on the right path. And this is, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a question that we have to, that this is a dua that we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. We have to ask Allah to keep us strong on the religion, keep us strong on the faith. Many people, they end up slowly drifting away from the faith and from the religion. This is why we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, the eve, the eve of the 15th of Sha'ban is the second most important night after Laylatul Qadr. So you have Laylatul Qadr, during the month of Ramadan, I know you all come out on Laylatul Qadr and you all do dua and we all participate in praying and supplicating. The second most important night after Laylatul Qadr is the eve of the 15th of Sha'ban. So this is why we have to take advantage of the opportunity and we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. The a'mal of course of the 15th of Sha'ban are not as long as the a'mal of Laylatul Qadr. There are several short du'as and inshallah we're going to have a program here at 8 p.m. Saturday night. 8 p.m. Saturday night. There's going to be a'mal, there's going to be the PowerPoint presentation in this room and um, du'a Kumail is one of the du'as that is recited. It's recommended to fast on that day, the Saturday 
And it is also, there are several short du'as that are going to be recited here and we're going to have a program here inshallah. Several of the mu'mineen of the brothers are going to be reciting the du'a inshallah. This is one thing I wanted to remind you all for. Another, um, another quick uh, reminder is that inshallah on April 5th, I know many of you are making your Ramadan plans from now. Fri the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan, we're planning on having uh, community iftar. Last year we had several iftars here, but because due to the space, we were unable to have the whole community together. So the whole point of this is so that we all gather and we all break, if we all um, have iftar together. And the intention behind this was to make it just for the sake of the community gathering. This is why the ticket was not is not as you know it's not a hundred dollars like the fundraising dinner ticket. This is uh, five hundred dollars a table. Uh, or $60 uh, individual ticket. We just want to gather the community together so that we can, you know, celebrate the month of Ramadan together. It's going to be right before the Eid. Um, I recommend and I ask you all to join us on that uh, day, inshallah. And of course, the Ramadan schedule is out. There's a, there's a flyer outside. And inshallah, we will be speaking more about it in the coming weeks. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, make us from the loyal supporters of the Imam of our time and from those who, who work towards hastening the reappearance of the Imam of our time. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتح مع الصلوات اللهم صل على محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا يلا قوموا الى صلاتكم <تصفيق>